I don't know. Hopefully that's better. So we're going into divisional championship weekend uh, in the NFL. Los Angeles Rams, New Orleans Saints, New England Patriots, Kansas City Chiefs. Um, both one and two seeds making it to the conference championship. Um, I think the same happened last year, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember who the Patriots, the Jaguars, they beat the Jaguars. No, the Steelers got knocked off last year by the Jags, okay. So, you know, we got a little different situation. Those that were supposed to be here basically got here essentially, but Um, I think the interesting thing coming out of the weekend that you look at is the Patriots, straight up and down. I don't think there's anybody else to talk about, any other conversations we had. Everybody should be on notice about the Patriots. Um, Patriots against the Chargers, ninth ranked across the board in defense. A lot of offensive weapons of strong, talented veteran quarterback. The Patriots definitely came out and made a statement. It was pretty interesting. Just seeing the way in which that they played, the way in which they attacked Phillip Rivers and the Chargers offensive line. I don't know what it is that they noticed over the season. But, you know, that aside, the noticed or saw on film, aside from that, you know, they just had a chip on their shoulder. I think they heard everybody talking about how they didn't necessarily look so good in the end of the season. A lot of people talked about their loss to the Dolphins. They came out as if they heard it and as if, you know, they knew something that everybody didn't know, you know? And I mean, and then scheme wise, you know, they had a lot of all out blitzes on Phillip Rivers early offensive line I mean didn't provide any help because early in the game you look at Mike Williams big catches he had the Ken Allen touchdown there were things that were there now of course the Patriots adjusted and made the requisite adjustments adjustment excuse me they just seemed to dominate the Chargers and the Chargers didn't look as if they were even supposed to be there you know, it's, it's going to go as another lost opportunity for Phillip Rivers. And honestly, like, it sucks because he was gaming, he was ready. But, you know, how many times is he just dropping back with two guys in his face just throwing the ball away to avoid a sack? You know, it sucked. But uh, going into Kansas City now is pretty interesting because the Patriots have struggled a lot playing outside of New England in the playoffs. You look back to their loss against Denver. The Chiefs, in a similar manner, at home against the Colts, showed that kind of we hear you kind of attitude. But the only thing with that is, is I feel more so that that was about the Colts' lack of talent than it was about um, Kansas City kind of coming out with something to prove. Even though they did have something to prove, I still feel like, you know, they were the better team at home, you know, against a team that just wasn't able to guard them. You know, the conditions ended up, you know, loosening up at the end of the game. And they were just able to dominate uh, Indianapolis. And I think that's just because of how seeding works. I don't think teams should have to play uh, third-time matchups, second-time matchups within two and three weeks in the playoffs, you know, because it's, it's an unfair advantage. I think everybody should have to play new opponents, you know, to an extent. Um, I think... It's going to be interesting because, you know, I don't know necessarily what it is to be expected from Kansas City. They lost to the Patriots already at home, putting up almost, you know, 50 points or whatever they scored in New England. But, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see how Bill Belichick decides to attack Tyreek Hill. Because I think Tyreek Hill is the X factor for the Kansas City Chiefs because he's so fast you know, and playing in that environment where, you know, they were talking a lot about going into the game, you know, offense knows where they're going, defense doesn't. You know, that's a big thing. And being able to guard against that speed, not knowing where he's going, but knowing that you're accounting for his speed is such a big deal. But 
I think Belichick is going to come with a strategy as well to manage and deal with Patrick Mahomes. So I'm scoring a rushing touchdown. I think you're going to look at that and that X factor and the ability that he has with his legs because since Texas Tech, he's been really, really good throwing on the run across the field, across his body, you know, to limit what it is he's able to do, you know, will be important because I think the focus and the emphasis on understanding, you know, keeping him in the pocket and not giving him an opportunity to give his guys a chance to use, like Tyreek Hill, a chance to use their speed, Travis Kelsey, you know, a chance to get good body position by maybe him moving, you know, forcing them to really run the ball. But the thing is with Tyreek Hill in this environment, the run game, you know, becomes – usable for him and he becomes dangerous you saw him score a long rushing touchdown or maybe you know a pop pass reverse like touchdown he scored against Indianapolis and at the end of the day there's nothing you can do with speed when speed gets his edge on you so you know I think you can't bet against Tom Brady but it'll be interesting to see him going into that environment Julian Edelman looks like he's juiced up and not on the reference to the requisite juicing he was doing the last couple seasons but he looks like he's here and ready to embrace the moment um and you know the Patriots offense civilly tap James White get 15 catches in the playoff game right let's talk about that James White <clears throat> excuse me James White had 15 catches in a playoff game this past weekend against an athletic Chargers defense you know it's not like the Chargers is out here on there 2000, not even 2000 Ravens, like, you know, Pittsburgh Steelers, 1970s, you know, we don't really play coverage. We just hit everything kind of jug, kind of game, you know, 15 catches for James White. That's paramount, tantamount in the Patriots playbook, right? You look back on Bill Belichick's career since coaching with the New York Giants, playing against the Roger Craigs and Thurman Thomases and, you know, uh, Marshall Fox. You know, LaDainian Tomlinson, you know, what he did against Marshall Falk in that Super Bowl to then turn around and use the knowledge of all of that, you know, and and translate that into his team and his offense and to help Tom Brady be, you know, being able to play above maybe the physical limitations that he has as an athlete at his age, you know, it's great. And it speaks to his coaching and what he's doing with Josh McDaniels. But I think that's going to be hard for the Chiefs to deal with because you already have to deal with putting Orlando Skandrick and, and Lucas and those guys possibly, probably without Eric Berry out in coverage. The one thing that the Chiefs do not do is play coverage well. Now, they played well against the Colts because they were able to bully that vaunted Colts offensive line. Will they be able to do that with the Patriots? Will be a different category and a different conversation and a different challenge. But if they can't hold up in coverage... You can look for James White and Sonny Michelle to have another big day. Because that's the thing, right? James White has 15 catches. Sonny Michelle ran it down the the coat. I mean, the Chargers' throat, the whole game. And they didn't even really need Gronk, but see, getting able, being able to put them off balance and keep them off, you know, um, helped the Patriots in the passing game because of the running game. It helped, you know, giving so many options and things you have to worry about that you can't seem to really stop they couldn't guard julian edelman with a better secondary than i think the chiefs have potentially they have best in the chiefs secondary but i think they're better linebacking core i don't think the chiefs linebackers necessarily coverage wise stand up that well and they'll have to while accounting for gronk who's not even gonna be that big of a factor but it's just his presence flowers all over rivers all game that was all game the patriots secondary did a good job but they didn't do it it was the d-line and the o-line So, you know, it's going to be a tough test. I'm done betting against Brady. I would love to see Mahomes do it, but Tom Brady's my vote. Simple. Uh, the Saints and the Rams, you know, the Rams played a great game at home against Dallas. I think they, again, you know, you had a few teams that clearly heard what was said about them. Uh... The Rams are another one, just like the Chiefs sack defense, you know, and the Patriots defense and, and offense. I think the Rams heard what it was that was said about them, and they took it upon themselves to, you know, step over and, and, and out of the shadow of the polarizing losses. You know, I talked a lot on social media with a lot of different people about how they polarized the Rams' losses. I think people wanted the Rams to fail. They referenced the Eagles' dream team and all this stuff in order to psychologically kind of get at the Rams, a lot of media and things like that. You know, and I think 
that definitely uh, played a part in injuries. And the guys had to play roles this season for the Rams. And I think going into this, they were healthy earlier than they've been all season. And they heard the talk and they said, you know, okay, well, folks started counting them down. Folks picks against the Rams. Well, they said, okay, we're going to get Dallas. Dallas on the little run. America's team, you know, they got their thing back going. And I think. You know, Sean McVay called the requisite play calls and saw the requisite holes in the Dallas' defense and the flow. And, you know, Vander Esch and, and Smith and really made them think cerebrally and play linebacker not on a speed and flow and athleticism thing, but honestly about recognition, directing their secondary calls and adjustments. And Dallas had a hard time. And that's why you saw Chris Richard having those issues. Um, you know, I think they did a great job containing and dealing with Ezekiel Elliott. And it'll be another hard task to deal with, you know, Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram coming back this week, but you saw Philadelphia do a good job of managing that and holding that. And simply when it came to tough downs, when you had to just man up and make a play and make a stand and bully your guy, you saw the Rams defense stepping up and making those requisite plays. I think, you know, the goal line stands, one guy who I was really happy, or not goal line stands, but yardage stands where the Rams D line got stopped. So I was happy to see in Dominican Sue, who I kind of saw again play a role, kind of let Aaron Donald take the lead and have his best season and free things up for him. Didn't maybe go as hard as folks may have expected him to, but kind of saving himself from getting banged up because it's hard in the trenches and saved himself to this point in the season a little bit. And he looked refreshed. He looked energized and he looked game for the task. And you saw him in the middle of the, the D line on a few big runs really make a lot of really, really big plays. You know, and I think the Rams secondary, while they got a little chippy, I think they got the Cowboys mentally out of their game. And I think that was part of the game with Amari Cooper and with Dallas because Dallas did a lot of talking. Um, going against the Saints, guarding Michael Thomas, I think they understand and know what it is they'll have to do. The Saints really do a good job of using Thomas as a 6'3", 6'4", receiver on the inside, like a smaller receiver and on a lot of quick routes, slant routes, smoke routes underneath, you know, drag routes and things like that, ins and outs. And it's hard with him so big because usually when he catches the ball and gets his momentum, he kind of has that that fast track. It's hard to, to stop him and tackle him and guard him. Now with Aqib Tlaib, Marcus Peters balances that out. Aqib Tlaib is the press corner between the two of them. And Peters struggled a lot this season, I think, in press, but I think having to lead back, you'll have somebody that'll be able to come up and play more press on Thomas. And I think that can, you know, slow him up a little bit on the line. Slow him in terms of Breeze is completing around 70% of his passes. He's probably going to get 60% in the game. But you got to be able to make that 60% a few more times where the route is maybe delayed a little more so Drew Breeze can take a few more hits so the D-line can push and pursue. Um, you know, and forcing these quarterbacks to hold the ball a little bit Coverage wise to give the defensive line time to make pressure time to disrupt time to slow things up I think the Saints defense even in a low scoring game against Philadelphia You know the Rams have to look to continue to come out here and make it hard on the Saints And make them account for everything and utilize everything Sean McVay can't just get in window dressing You got to use everything just like he did against Dallas not just making them look at the plays and the run actions and the reverse actions and the play action and you know trying to get to the over second window second level throws you have to use those underneath you know uh smoke screens and reverses and jet sweeps and things like that to really slow down the saints defensively because they want to play left fast they want to use their fast track they're going to want to use their d-line and their defense show the rankings goes down so uh up front you know all pro level all pro d tackle for the saints is gone in the run game, they should be potentially a little more vulnerable, boys. You saw the Rams' O-line took advantage of Dallas's D-line, who played really, really good, ninth across the board all season. But the Saints are the number one run defense. Sheldon Rankins is a lot of the reason why. With him out, you got to look for uh, C.J. Anderson and Ty Gurley to really handle their business and run the ball well. I think one of the things I like seeing with C.J. Anderson is just his ability to um, – his vision is really good, and he's really, really patient back there. And his ability to um, read his holes and take contact and make guys miss in a hole and still get good positive yards. I don't think we saw him go backwards a lot on Sunday against the Cowboys defense. And I think their linebacking core, while they may the Cowboys be better than the Saints, I think, you know, the Saints D line probably is equal to the Cowboys or, or a little bit better. So you got to be able to manipulate those guys and again go downhill at them. But I think it's possible for the Rams. Um, it'll be interesting seeing them attack uh, Marcus Lattimore, Marshawn Lattimore and um, Eli Apple and those guys, Bob Bill, I think 
uh, Lattimore definitely was keyed up and breaking on a lot of balls. But I think having a guard, Brandon Cooks, Brandon Cooks getting a chance at redemption, and Robert Woods, you know, Troy Aikman said arguably the most, the best of the complete receivers in the NFL, you know, in terms of blocking and everything. I think, you know, Woods, you saw him out of a big game and a good game against the Cowboys. I think, you know, him and Cooks and, and Reynolds will have to step up again. Uh, against the secondary, but I think they can. I think they definitely can make the requisite plays. Um, it'll be interesting to see, I think, just because, you know, the team that is able to run the ball uh, should dominate. And I think both teams have two-headed monsters in the backfield between the Rams and the Saints right now. And that'll be interesting. And, you know, the Chiefs have a little bit of a running back committee by committee situation. The Patriots, you know, have a little bit of running back by committee situation. James White, you got Sonny Michelle, Burkhead, I think, scored. So, you know, it'll be interesting. The team that can establish the run and dominate in the run game will be the team, I think, that wins the game because time of possession is so important. I think the Saints, you saw them see, seem the most vulnerable. And, I mean, I had my doubts and my worries about the Rams playing Dallas because Dallas is so dangerous because their defense was good. They were top 10 last year. They were ninth this year again. That defense is really good. And then with Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott were able to do running the ball, I think, made them extremely dangerous. But Philadelphia, from a veteran leadership, from a, a belief situation and standpoint, you know, perceptively was really, really dangerous. But, you know, it's interesting to see this because – you know, I think the Patriots are the most dangerous team in the playoffs right now, but I'm not sure who's the most talented. Because Bill Belichick is the greatest coach in the NFL history, and his lineage goes through one of the best coaching eras and trees, and you know, another great dynasty in the New York Giants with Bill Parcells ever. You know, so you know you have to face that with one of the greatest coaches ever. If if you take Bill Belichick out of the equation, Andy Reid is arguably the best coach in this era that we've seen, right? You go in and, and look at the coaching tree where he comes from with Holmgren and those guys and uh, Green Bay, you know, in the West Coast offense. And it's like, wow, Andy Reid is probably arguably one of the greatest coaches. Sean Payton, again, arguably, we know how great he is, but arguably one of the greatest coaches all overshadowed by Bill Belichick, you know. And it's going to be an interesting situation, right? So you have those three heavyweight vets. And I talked about the Rams already and. But back to go back to the Rams, you got Sean Payton, who is kind of in the middle of all of this. You have this West Coast offensive tree that he comes from a little bit with the McVay family being connected to the San Francisco 49ers, which is connected to Bill Walsh, which is connected to, you know, Jay Rice, Montana and all of that era. Right. And Walsh learning under Paul Brown, you know, back in the day coming all the way forward. Well, McVay now is a young up and coming coach, kind of like Bill Belichick was back in the day right a little bit like Andy Reid was to an extent some with the Packers and he's leading the Rams back again you know trying to get into the championship so it's going to be an interesting Sunday I think AFC wise can't ever pick against the Patriots I said I wouldn't do it after I saw him beat the Atlanta Falcons having watched them beat everybody in my ear I've been a Rams fan since I was a kid uh beat Kurt Warner Marshall Falcon those guys Asterisk may be, you know, uh, Carolina Panthers, Philadelphia Eagles, um, Seattle Seahawks, uh, Atlanta Falcons down by 23, Seattle Seahawks on the goal line with the game. Like, you know, I don't pick against Brady when it comes to him getting there. Philadelphia did it last year. So I think the Patriots will win. My enthusiasm wants to see the Chiefs do it. And I think Patrick Mahomes might be capable. If there's one type of created character-like player, it'll be him. But, you know, uh, it is definitely going to be hard. I'm not going to pick against the Patriots because Bill Belichick is the greatest coach ever and the greatest defensive mind ever. And his schemes and his preparation is better than anybody. So I'm going to go Patriots. Um, NFC, uh, I think it's going to be hard in the dome for the Rams. If they're not able to run the ball like they did against Dallas and the Saints will be keyed up because of how they ran the ball down Dallas's throat, the Rams aren't able to do that. Jared Goff is going to have to make the requisite throws to win. I still believe and think he can make those throws, especially if the offensive line gives him time. Um, the Rams' defense is going to have to step up and stand up. I think in the secondary, they're going to handle their business, and they're going to step up. They want this rematch. They want this. The secondary wants it. But they got to step up and, and, and do it. It can't be enough to just be there. you got to make sure that you handle your business and be your best when you're there. I think um, the D-line. If they, if y'all the guys, y'all one moment away from being one moment away. So, you know, it's going to be tough. 